Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of First and Last. My name is Josh, and with me this week, I have only Joe. Hey, man. Well, hello. I am the titular man this time. <laughs> only speaking to you. Yeah. None of the none of the other people listening to this. Uh, how's it going, man? Uh, you know, um, it's warm. It's been a warm week. Yeah, I went for a bike ride during lunchtime today, mm-hmm. and then I think it was hot for about three hours after that. <laughs> it just couldn't cool down. Just couldn't. I was sitting in front of a fan with the air conditioning on. Yeah. Like it was just like why. Just like panting like a dog. <laughs> well, and then maybe you don't have this problem. Maybe it's just a me problem. Someone out there has. Someone out there listening is going to go, yeah, I totally know what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. You know, if you're like hot and then you take a shower and then you're just like still sweaty. Like mm-hmm. the shower didn't do it because the shower is a little warm. Because mm-hmm. I don't really like taking cold showers. Oh, you don't? No, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a warm. I mean, a warm shower is fine. I don't mm-hmm. need a hot shower by any means. But then sometimes, like, the knobs aren't working the way you want them to work. And then the shower's a little hot, and then you get done. Mm-hmm. And then you're just like, I'm still sweaty. I'm clean, but I'm, like, sweaty still. Yeah. I guess maybe I take longer showers, too. But, like, I also, during a hot day, like, take, like you said, like, not a cold shower, but, like, a just a warm shower. Yeah, yeah. And then towards the end, I keep notching. Notching the, it down. Yeah, I keep notching it down colder and colder and colder until I'm just like, all right, I got to get out. So I've, by the time I'm done with that, I'm like real cool (laughs) yeah i feel like we have uh we have like a shitty apartment (laughs) shower you know that like there's no real finesse when it comes to like moving the dials (laughs) it's just ice cold or yeah it's just i mean i think most of the time it's usually just like extremely burning hot (laughs) and and then you can get it to like ah this is tolerable but it's still like warm pretty warm Mm -hmm. and then it's like this is way too cold (laughs) so uh yeah, that was uh that was my day, really. Cool. Just being being hot. Being hot. Mm. But uh um uh, uh, listen, uh, listeners, I guess you're wondering, where is Jimmy? Mhm. Well, he still hates those whales. <laughs> I honestly don't know where he is this time. I feel like the last times I knew where he was, this time I really don't know. He could be in like Costa Rica or something or like well, there's way, if there's other whales off the coast of Costa Rica, it's like his dog's birthday or something. That was that was like a couple weeks ago. <laughs> Do, dog's already been uh, had a had a day of birth celebration. Hmm. I think he's just like with family, hanging out in a cabin somewhere. He just didn't want to do this tonight. Yeah, he said, "Nah, I don't want." No, he's just at home. I don't want to do it. <laughs> just not tonight, guys. <laughs> Come on. But uh, no, he's a uh, he's he's off somewhere destroying all whales' lives. Jimmy he's, Jimmy has yeah. a Jimmy has a saying and it's no whales lives matter. <laughs> he's he's taking a turn. N W L M. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's right. He watched Free Willy and got the wrong message from it. <laughs> he was like, "Why w- w- let it go free? We should just kill it." <laughs> but it's a killer whale. It's out in the wild now. <laughs> uh, that's too bad. That's too bad. Uh, Okay, well, this is not a Jimmy Hates Whales podcast. That's what he's possibly recording tonight, actually, (laughs) while he's not with us. I don't know. Whale Hate podcast. One week, we're just going to have no TV show. It's just going to be a stream of consciousness of Jimmy alone talking about hating whales. (laughs) And they're so big, they're stupid. Um, (laughs) Big, dumb whales. Big, dumb whales are so stupid. Why do they live in the water? They think that they're better than us. They're mammals, and they live in the water. Look at them. (laughs) They're all so wet. Yeah, Jimmy. Jimmy, you're really rude when it comes to whales. I hope you're listening <laughs> to this. Stop being so whale rude. Uh, but Joe, what is first and last for anybody that uh, likes whales in uh, TV? <laughs> usually a TV pod. Um, but instead of like taking a look at the whole of a TV show, we only look at the beginning and end. We watch the first episode, soak that in, uh, try to make some predictions for the finale, and then we skip straight to the finale watch that one and kind of recoup what we had seen, how the characters have grown or not grown. Um, and if we were interested in watching the rest of the show, (laughs) most of the time I don't, (laughs) (laughs) you have, have you, where are you? Frasier, Frasier check-in. Oh no, I haven't seen (laughs) Frasier in a while. I I don't even know like what, I feel like it's, move streaming services since we like started that. Right. It's on like Paramount or something. I mean, you had, you had plenty of time. Yeah. But now we're going to have to get you a different streaming service. Yeah. 
Or this podcast ends. Something. This podcast essentially just ends the day you finish Frasier. Once We're I like, close it out. We did it. <laughs> I got deep. I got into where Niles and Daphne were getting together, but then I stopped after that. That's pretty late in the game. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They really milk that for like all it's worth. <laughs> so yeah. Okay. That's fair. Well, today, Joe, in the not in the not necessarily in the Frasier ilk, but we are going to be watching a show about love. Okay. About how everybody loves Raymond. <laughs> everybody? Yeah. Oh, man. We haven't done this show before? No. Oh, my gosh. I know, right? This it, is a hit. It blew my mind. There was a period of time, um, probably not when the show was live, but when it was like in syndication, where like um, probably about half of my conversation with my parents would just be like, oh, man. And then this one time on Raymond. <laughs> 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 like this is their like go to like small talk. And I was like, oh man, should have seen this thing on Raymond last night. <laughs> like your parents are telling you this? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Did you- <laughs> no, no, it's me telling my parents what I, hey, man. What I saw and everybody loves Raymond. In ra- <laughs> randomly, you're just like, I was eating, in, I was eating dinner, and everybody loves Raymond was on, <laughs> and I just found out it's on every time I eat dinner. <laughs> College Joe is just sucked into everybody loves Raymond. <laughs> Maybe I feel like when I've seen it, I haven't like hated it. Maybe maybe he is right. Maybe everyone does love Raymond. Well, we're going to find out. We're going to see if two people here love yeah. Raymond. I feel like also whenever I've seen or heard, because he does a lot of voice stuff. Um, what's this guy's name? Raymond what? Uh, Raymond Somer. No, what? No. Ray Romano? Is that Ray what you're Romano. talking about? Yeah, okay. yeah. Every time I've heard him or seen him in other things, I thought he's really funny. Outside of everybody loves Raymond. Yeah, I want to think. Uh, I want to think that Ray Romano is not only pretty funny, but also like uh, like a kind of a stand up guy, right? He isn't. Uh, he hasn't been like. <laughs> we haven't found. He's been seventh heaven. Yeah, if you will. yeah, exactly. <laughs> doubt it. I doubt it. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's good. Well, really quick, uh, it went for nine seasons, two hundred and ten episodes. Uh, it was in uh, premiered in September nineteen ninety. In 96 and it ended in may of 2005 okay so so yeah so that does line up with me coming back home from college and me being like so what's new parents and they're just like last night on raymond and they're like <laughs> did you hear what happened on raymond uh so w- yeah i mean maybe you know more about the show than i do already <laughs> then um i think for at least for the beginning of the show it centers around it's like Raymond and his wife, they're like newlyweds or so, but oh, like okay. they like live close to both of their parents. And it's like mostly a sitcom about like having to deal with in-laws. The only part, the only parents I remember from the show are Raymond's parents. Mm-hmm. Did, did his dad and mom come over all the time? I don't I, remember his wife. What is his wife's name? I could be wrong about that too. Um, We'll find out what his wife's name in the show is. I can picture her face. I don't remember her name. She is played, I believe, by Patricia Houston. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's her. Yeah. But I oh, she Deborah. Deborah. Yep. Deborah. Yeah. So I recognize her for sure. Um, and I yeah, I can't picture her parents, or maybe they're her parents and not. Is she like parents. a Scientologist or something? Oh, Do I? God. <laughs> she, <laughs> there's something fucked up with her or something like that. <laughs> What's fucked up with her? <laughs> <laughs> Raymond is clean. Ray Romano is clean, but uh. Uh, all of his co-stars are terrible. Well, are we going to do like Scientology month and then we're going to have to do King of Queens because like Leah Remini used to be that, a Scientologist. Okay, yeah, that's or is that who you're thinking, thinking about? Oh, yeah. Okay. She's the one that's like, she was like formally in it and she got out. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. She, she, uh, went, she's no longer clear. <laughs> she's going clear is when you're a Mormon or whatever. Or no, not, not Mormon. Mormon. <laughs> Scientologist. Ah, I mean, sure. In a way, Mormons are clear, right? I don't know, man. I'm not I'd that. like to know more. If you have some pamphlets to send me, send them to my address at uh if I could rattle off Jimmy's address by heart, I would just say it right now. P.O. Box. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy hates whales dot com. <laughs> uh no, okay. So yeah, it's him. I guess I don't now now you've thrown in doubt in my mind, I'm like, is it his parents or her parents? Okay. Is it both? I thought it was both, but I could be wrong because like now I can't picture what the other set of parents look like. I can only picture one set. It's like 
two old people, and then it's like his brother is there too for some reason. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. His brother is like that big guy, mm-hmm. and I don't remember what his name is. No, doesn't he uh, like cross dress at the end of the, in the show at some? Or is that? Or does he just do that some other time? <laughs> is that on the I, Drew I Carey show? <laughs> <laughs> in my mind, in my mind, that his brother is dating Mimi from the Drew Carey show. Oh, but like in the show, as if the shows are connected somehow. Like actually Mimi from the Drew Carey show. Yeah, interesting. I don't know if any of this is true. Okay, this is just what, this is what my <laughs> mind is doing right now. Okay, because it's obviously not going to happen in the first episode. Yeah, yeah. But in my mind, they're the same universes. Huh? Where does everybody love Raymond? Where do they live? Ah, man, I mean, because Drew they, Carey's in Cleveland, right? Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if this show's in like somewhere middle America, Cleveland or Cincinnati, well, I, Milwaukee. Like, <laughs> somewhere middle america i mean but it also could be like i don't know like rochester new york yeah <laughs> you know it could be whatever so i feel like it's for sure not like los angeles or new york right no it's no, like a suburban no. town. yeah it's some it, yeah some because it, it's not i don't even think it's as, as uh, glamorous as like a suburb of chicago like uh <laughs> you know like family matters or something <laughs> yeah, like that yeah like, it's exactly. not even it's not even there <laughs> So I mean I, I assume yeah because if they're if they're newlyweds I don't even think in my mind they've just always been married yeah yeah um but it's definitely like maybe it's here I'm gonna say it's got to be all of Ray Ray's family yeah because it's him his wife I know they have a little daughter at some point and mm-hmm. I don't know where she is in the spectrum yeah like of age yeah <laughs> of age that spectrum. Uh, <laughs> When when the show starts, but I remember her being like a f- solid five to six year old. Yeah, at like some has point. dialogue. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, mommy, uh, <laughs> I want a pie. Yeah, full on SAG actress. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then like his brother comes over, and then I just assume because everybody loves Raymond, it must be his parents that come over. It must all the be time yeah, too. Raymond centric. Yeah, yeah. That so makes sense. I, that's why I would assume it's his parents and her Deborah. She doesn't have parents. They're all, they're dead. They're dead. They're gone. They would have loved Raymond. Yeah, they would have loved him. Man, for one sentence, one sentence in this pilot is, man, my family would have loved you if they wouldn't all be dead. But what are you going to do? They're all dead. Or they did not love Raymond, and that's why they're no longer around. And now everyone loves Raymond. <laughs> Whoa! We find out in the dark past that everybody didn't love Raymond until he murdered them. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Okay. Wait. Um. I was gonna try to like hide away any of my personal life from this podcast, or at least at least this week of the podcast. But let's just say that me and Claire took a trip this weekend. <laughs> okay. For no any sort of celebration. Um. <laughs> but we went up to uh, Duluth. And there's this old timey mansion called the Glen Sheen Mansion. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You've heard of this? Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. I know exactly where it is. Um, and it's now like oddly enough. Yeah, it's now run by. It was like gifted to the University of Minnesota Duluth, mm-hmm. and is just a museum now. Um, and I remember Claire saying that like the family like had abandoned this house in the '70s and just like left it exactly as it was then hadn't changed anything and like that's why it's a museum now yeah and so we're like cool it's like we just did this this morning like toured this mansion and there's like oh look at all this like oh old rich people shit great <laughs> uh, uh so we're touring it and like um we're walking around some of like the bedrooms and we could hear people coming up behind us like talking to like one of the workers there mm-hmm. and they're just like, excuse me, like, is this room where the murders happen? And she was like, Oh yeah, yeah. It's right in here. Oh. And we're just like, what? <laughs> we Googled it later. And apparently like the last remaining heir to like this, like fortune, uh, like lived there until she was 83 when she was murdered in the house. Why would you even murder an 83 year old? That's what I'm saying. Like the, so who they had suspected was like one of her kids, um, who was just like desperate for money and like waiting on this inheritance, like yeah. couldn't wait anymore. And like, me, ma, just die already. Yeah. And it came in and like smothered her or whatever oh, in God. the house. Right. That's personal. Which like, because I'm a terrible person, like the first thing I thought of was like, 
she's 83 years old. Like you couldn't make this look like an accident. Like, <laughs> right. There's things you can just put in her, like, I don't know, Pedialyte in the morning or something. Yeah, that, like, like, she, or just like hide her medica- medication and like, she'll be dead in a week. Like, Grandma doesn't know where her meds are. Yeah. Because I flushed them down the toilet. <laughs> like he smothered. Oh my God. He smothered her. But yeah, that was pretty wild to find out. Like while we were in the house or just like, there was not one, but two murders that happened here. Cats climbing through things and it's everything's about to just be so loud. Hey, you know what? This is we're we're learning things. First right? and last has become the uh, kitty interruption podcast over the past couple of weeks. She's just finding the things that can make the most sound. Oddly enough, maybe uh maybe an update next week. Uh, the room that we're recording in is the room that the kitten is going to stay in starting tonight. <laughs> so I guess right now, depending on what she knocks over and or breaks while we're recording i'll know i'll know what needs to be removed <laughs> it's finding a way okay oh <laughs> this is gonna end well she's like okay i'm she's <laughs> over a stack of ps3 games next to just like an empty glass bottle it's a um, final fantasy 15 uh <laughs> uh jones soda bottle oh she made it through that was pretty it was pretty good actually pretty solid um yeah Okay, she did it all right. So, so go see the murder house in in Duluth. In Duluth. So okay, so th- and I ask th- the workers about the murder because they are not allowed to talk about the murder. Oh, they're not allowed to talk about it. Um, I think they can answer questions like yes, that happened here, but they're not supposed to like. Is it one of those things? Don't bring it up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> if people ask, you can, like we're not gonna pretend like there wasn't a murder, mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. someone's like, dude, like, oh, like they mur- murdered that lady, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, eighty three years old. Just wait. Especially in the 70s? Yeah. I mean, you can't wait. Like, just, I don't know. Like, uh, we forgot to shovel and she slipped. Like, <laughs> oh, like just be negligent for a little bit and, like, she's going to die, I promise. If forensics wasn't that good back then, right? <laughs> yeah, also like, you know? Uh, regardless, uh, <laughs> they smothered her and they still somehow got off scot-free, like, so maybe maybe I'm the asshole for thinking that they needed to work hard to make this look like an accident. Uh, it sounds like to me they worked just hard enough. <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, at some point they found out it was a murder then, right? I don't... Uh, Claire was reading the thing, but somehow they, like, wasn't enough evidence, but it was clearly them that murdered it. And, like, oh, one and of those. Just, they just threw the case out and just mm. like, oh, okay. Excellent. <laughs> so you think Raymond murdered <laughs> Deborah's family? Is that... <laughs> Yes, and now everybody loves Raymond. And <laughs> yeah. if they don't, <laughs> they they get the the old smother. Yeah, the old little Ray they, smother action. They're gonna meet like a mailman who like, you know, has a has a grudge against Raymond, and Raymond's gonna give him a look, and the studio audience is like gonna laugh and clap, and then the episode ends. <laughs> yeah, the end of it was gonna end with Raymond looking at the camera and going, "Mailman Steve's kind of a problem." <laughs> And they're just like, oh, Raymond. Second episode. We all love you. <laughs> second episode's called Death of a Mailman. <laughs> uh, I mean, what happens in the first episode? What if it was reversed? What if they got married in the first episode? I love it. That'd be great. Great reversal. Yeah, right? Flip it on its head. They get... it's The first episode is the marriage. Um, I mean, it, that's probably like the cold open, right? Yeah. Cold they're open, all... they get married, and then they like... They're like, this is our house and, uh, you know, insert city name, insert mm-hmm. suburban name. And then they're like, cool. And then in walks brother and Ray's parents. Mm-hmm. And Deborah goes, wish my parents could be here. And then looks at Ray in a weird way because <laughs> he murders them. Remind yeah. you, remind you. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, and then they just like, yeah, I don't know, they brunch. <laughs> and that's the whole episode, right? Everything seems fine. Yeah. What, what what's uh, yeah is there gonna be a, a there's not this isn't a show that's got like lessons are real problems right it can't be lessons but there's got to be like conflict right that like everybody's over at the house and Deborah doesn't like it and like maybe he like uh maybe he like gives uh maybe that's maybe Deborah, Deborah's parents are in the first episode and he gives his mom like peanuts and she dies <laughs> oh god <laughs> Seventh Heaven episode, uh, first episode where uh, that Deborah's mom has cancer and or leukemia or whatever. Mm-hmm. I don't think De- Deborah's parents are dead. I'm just yeah, calling. They got to be gone. They got to right? be gone, right? Yeah. It's too many moving parts. 
everybody uh, to love Raymond. Maybe, maybe uh, this show in my mind thinks like the biggest problem in any episode is like Ray did the Ray did the laundry, but he put like a red shirt in with the whites, and like that's the problem. Mm. You know, like that's the big. Oh, you ruined my white dress. It was our wedding dress. We got married yesterday. Why am I washing it in our washer? <laughs> uh, Should we just watch the first episode? I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'll be sus- suspicious of Raymond from here on Yeah, out. let's find out. Watch, watch this. We're going to do the first episode as Murder Mystery, Everybody Who <laughs> Loves Raymond. Uh, it premiered uh, September 13th, 1996. And it was called Pilot. What what uh what network network is this on? CBS. Okay. I, I mean I don't know my TV history, but I <laughs> Does feel that like mean anything to I you? feel like mid nineties, like like for sure NBC is popping. Mm-hmm. ABC's got their like TGIF stuff, and I sure. feel like CBS is kind of lagging behind. But as we get into like the two thousands, like and even into now, like CBS has had like twenty years of domination, right? Well, like do they have like NCIS or something like that or yeah okay. all those dumb shows all the Chuck Lorre shows like, oh, yeah. yeah so this is it this is it what mm-hmm. really quick uh okay no Chuck Lorre did not create it <laughs> somebody uh, Philip Rosenthal do you know who that is no neither do I we're gonna Sounds watch rich <laughs> rich Philip Rosenthal's everybody loves Raymond we'll be back after the first episode And we're back. We're done with the first episode of Everybody Loves Raymond. It was called Pilot. Hmm. And I have a teeny tiny little write-up for us. Uh, this is off IMDb. It was written by JGP3553. Sounds rich. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is, uh, what they wrote is, Deborah doesn't want Raymond's family to barge in unannounced from across the street on her birthday. So it's up to Raymond to gently break the news to them. Cool. Pretty, yeah. pretty much, pretty much what happened. Yeah. So Deborah and Raymond are a married couple. They have um, a five-year-old daughter and two-year-old twin, twin boys. Yep. Um, and yeah, the central conflict is that uh, Raymond's parents and brother live literally across the street and they just pop in whenever they want to. There's just zero boundaries. Who they didn't go into this, but like, who do you think moved there second? I would have always, I just would have completely assumed Ray and his wife moved there second. I can't, yeah, that's kind of what I thought is like that, like his parents and Robert have been living there for a while mm-hmm. and they just, you know, Raymond. Happened to find a house across the street that like worked out for his family and moved in there. Yeah. And then you went, okay, are we cool with them being over here constantly? Mm -hmm. And they said, yes. (laughs) And now they hate it. Yeah. Um, (laughs) But that's the, that's the problem (laughs) with it. So, yeah, I mean, it it manifests itself in that um, Deborah's birthday is coming up and she just wants to have like, Essentially, just like her and Raymond time after they put the kids to bed. Um, But like they just know that the way that their family is, like they know it's Deborah's birthday. They're going to drop in and want to have like a big thing. And like it's just too much all the time to have them there. And (laughs) (laughs) cat cat claws are coming from under the door. She'll push the door open eventually. Just just from from under the door. It's funny. Um, But yeah, I mean... You know, and they play into the, um, you know, kind of the typical in-law comedic drama of just like, oh, Raymond's mom is here and like trying to tell Deborah how to run the household. And <laughs> she brought over baking Zeta. Yeah. She's like, when I was over here yesterday, your fridge smelled a little weird. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. So, I mean, one of the things was Ray was off on like a business trip for like four days and Deborah was home alone and then Ray's mom came over like every single day mm-hmm. and she always comes over unannounced. Mm-hmm. And then for whatever reason, I think just Deborah was going like went out or did something, you know, one night and Ray stayed home to watch the kids. Yeah. And then his mom came over and then he left. Well, his friend Leo came over. Oh yeah. yeah. And said like, Hey, like 
Like, let's like ditch this joint. Your kids are asleep. And Raymond's like, they're not, they're not fish. You can't just like, <laughs> oh yeah, drop off food for them. And then like, they're good. Like, yeah, people just God, people. Do people think that when you put your kids to bed, you can just <laughs> leave the house? Uh, yeah, I don't know. They're, they're sleeping, right? You just bring like a baby monitor with you or something. Uh, one time, this is messed up. One time, <laughs> one time when I was growing up, I remember this. I was like, I mean, I was like little. I was like taking a bath, mm-hmm. but I wasn't like too little. Like I could be in the bath by myself, mm-hmm. and I was like fine. It's probably like, I don't know. Like, let's say I was six, mm-hmm. um, and like my stepdad was home, but he was like in the garage, mm-hmm. and our garage like wasn't connected, so it was like. He wasn't like connected to the house. He wasn't in the building. He was in the yeah. building. Yeah, basically, yeah. He was in the building. He was in the garage. And then my mom came home mm-hmm. from like work, and she like came home and like saw that I was like in the bath, and she was like, "Hey, get out really fast! <laughs> like, get out now!" And I was like, "What?" And she's like, we're, "Like, we're gonna mess!" Like, she literally got me out. I like dried off, like got clothes, and then like we left <laughs> <laughs> to like freak him out. <laughs> And I feel like even as a kid, I was like, this is messed up. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty traumatizing. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, we walked like around the house. Like, you know, we didn't like go somewhere for like an hour. For, like hours. Yeah. <laughs> it was just like a five minute joke. But uh-huh. it was just like, man, that is, that's like making someone think their kid's dead. Yeah. Or like been kidnapped. Like <laughs> Literally. Shit. I got taken. <laughs> but it was by my mom and it wasn't like a weird domestic dispute. Thing. It was just like a joke. <laughs> Uh, what were what were we talking about now? I don't know even. Oh, just that you can't just like leave kids by themselves. Oh yeah, yeah, and that's yeah. a good. And reason. And Leo was saying like, "Yo, like Raymond, let's let's go get a slice of pizza." And he's like, "I can't leave." And then the mom comes over. She just shows up, obviously. Yeah, and she's like, "I'll watch the kids. Like, whatever, go have a good time." And which I feel like, in general, like probably okay, but like totally fine. But again, it's about boundaries and that like your mom can't just like come over to just like watch the kids all the time because then she's like fucking here raising her kids and like <laughs> grandma's our new mom. Exactly. Because yeah. your mom is dead, mom. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We still don't have brute. We don't know what, are, what are Deborah's parents uh, status is. Yeah. yeah. Not not conclusive what happened to them. Uh, but yeah, so then she comes home, Deborah comes home, and everyone like Ray comes home, it kicks everybody out, mm-hmm. um, puts the kids back to bed, mm-hmm. and then Deborah comes home, and then like s- s- pretty quickly fi- like finds out like what's going on. Oh, the reason she finds out is because she went and checked out the twins, and they smelled like Old Spice. Oh yeah, and she was heads. like, "Your dad was sucking the youth out of their heads again." <laughs> yeah, because he did a thing where he would walk behind the kids and like sniff the yeah, top he of their heads, like them, yeah. and then he would say, "I'm sucking the youth out of their heads," <laughs> and I'm like, "That is creepy and awesome." <laughs> uh, then she got mad, so basically, then she was like, "Your parents can't come to my birthday." Which I thought it was going to be like a birthday party for a while, for yeah, a while, yeah. mm-hmm. but it was just apparently going to be the Raymond family mm-hmm. and then his parents and his brother mm-hmm. until then they got kicked out. And then so he went over to tell his mom that they couldn't come anymore. Mm-hmm. And then he made up a story about how he was going to take Deborah to Bear Mountain. Yeah. Just some lodge somewhere. Yeah. Um, as a surprise. And then on her birthday, the parents just came over. Do they have a key? They have to, I mean, they have a key? They have to have a key, I guess. Oh, yeah, yeah, because they came, unless unless they left the front door unlocked. Which then it's like, oh, is it, I mean, I guess it's 1996. Maybe this is like, they're like this. They're on Long Island, by the way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, And really quick, it is not the same guy that's dating Mimi in cleveland ohio yeah they're two completely different actors (laughs) they're just both really tall white dudes okay so that's on me (laughs) uh but uh yeah so then they come over and they they look like they were just trying to put like presents in the house while they were gone basically Mm -hmm. but then they're like hey you're here Mm -hmm. uh and then ray stay like 85 percent stands his ground and is like you guys can't come over here and do all this stuff mm-hmm, mm-hmm. unless you call first and mm-hmm. we're stop stop telling us what to do mm-hmm. unless you call first. 
So, and then that, apparently that was enough that impressed Deborah, you know? Yeah. It, I mean, and again, it's it's not that they can't come over. It's just there needs to be rules and boundaries. It can't just be an open door. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, and I, like, I've seen this happen a lot with, I just have, I mean, I'm, I'm newly married and like, I also have like siblings that are married and had to, have had to deal with in-laws and stuff. And it's just about like, uh, like you got to have boundaries and there has to be like clear expectations and it's not necessarily about one thing in particular, or it's not like even like your like parents or in-laws are like terrible people. It's just like, just have to have control over your own fucking life well that's why you <laughs> that's why you move uh many states away and then exactly and so then you know full you usually generally will fully well know when the interruptions are gonna happen <laughs> yeah and then you're safe <laughs> um all in all uh how how was this pilot our first episode for you uh it was very just okay um <laughs> for some reason i th- i even though it's a show I'd never seen, I thought it was going to be like, oh man, I'm going to just like really eat this up for some uh-huh. reason. Um, but it was really just fine. I don't know that there were any particular jokes that really got me. Um, but it also wasn't stupid by any means. No, it wasn't bad, you mm-hmm. know, but it, I mean, you know, it wasn't Fraser level. No. Yeah. By any sure means. Mm-hmm. But uh, I mean, it was probably better than uh, the first episode of Big Bang Theory. Yeah, probably. For sure. For sure, right? <laughs> it's got to be better than that. I mean, the first part was pretty funny when he like came home and he... Or when he was like... Uh, when he was trying to like... He was like, what, is this your brother Gregory or is this your brother uh, Matthew? And then he was like, oh, shoot. Which one's which? Let's not tell mom about this. Mm-hmm. And I was like, they have clearly different hairstyles right now. <laughs> yeah, the kids look different. And I was like, I'm sure there's a, a way as a parent, they're two, they're two years old. You figured out a way to tell them apart, I would assume. Mm-hmm. Oh, he did say, that was a pretty hilarious part. He said, they're really cute right now, but I worry that they'll grow up to be like not very good looking or like they will be kind of ugly, yeah, even, yeah. even kind of ugly. Because mm-hmm. if one ugly, kind of ugly guy walks by, people just go, oh, I mean whatever and they don't even think about it but then when a second version of that same ugly guy (laughs) walks by then they go oh man those are ugly people (laughs) i was like yes yeah solid solid musing that might have been my favorite joke in the show and it was right at the end just a little tag i'm trying to figure out whether or not i have seen two uh, like a pair of ugly twins Mm mm-hmm I feel like I, I feel like I've never cared enough about what twins look like. Yeah, I feel like I've always been very neutral on twins. If anything, I'm always like, oh, why are you wearing the same thing? You're 30. <laughs> That's too much. Uh, yeah, I thought it was fine. It's fine episode of TV. I'm sure. Uh, let's see how many. Only it looks like 8.8 million viewers. Mm-hmm. Is I mean, I was like, is that a lot in 1996? Uh, I have no idea how TV works. I remember at some point. Oh, okay. So this show got it. It just grew. Looking at uh, looking at Wikipedia, mm-hmm. eight point eight by the end of season one, the finale of season one, fourteen point three million. Okay, and it pretty much held that for all through season two, all through season three, hot, way higher, sixteen to seventeen million in season four. Dang. Like, I mean, could you imagine a, a show that's holding 16, 17 million? That's not even, that's like game, that's higher than like Game of Thrones level mm-hmm. these days. Uh, or then, then uh, 22, 20, 20 to 22 million in season five. So yeah, this show got, either it got real good, <laughs> you know? I mean. And it just hit that spot. I think it's interesting that like. You know, it's there's a lot of a you know young couple sitcoms yeah. in and around this time. Uh, Mad about you, I think of, um, but even just other family sitcoms, right? Because it is a family sitcom; they already have the kids. Um, but I think it's e- interesting that they lean in on the like the in law relationship and like seeing these actors that have been in other shows and stuff. Like you know, the in laws are gonna be a like big part of the show. 
it just seems like an interesting niche that hadn't been like filled by a lot of, a lot of other that's true it's sitcoms like comes at the time yeah it's like they they put two families together that don't really know each other from right. like dad and mom or mm-hmm. they just have like a young family like mad about you that doesn't have kids and they just have to deal with like mm-hmm. their friends and yeah. Blah, blah, blah. There isn't really a show that I can place that is like, we're married and we just live in a suburb, but our parents keep mm-hmm. bo- bothering us. And that hits an interesting demographic of like people who are Raymond and Deborah's, who are in Raymond and Deborah's situation, who mm-hmm. they're a young couple and they're watching this and going, oh yeah, I can relate. Or like people who are the parents' age, like my parents' age would have been at the time mm-hmm. to be like, is that uh, why they love this? They were like, yeah. <laughs> We're like, oh, we can we can bug Joe like this one day. <laughs> well, like my sister's much older, and like her family is already starting at that point. So like, you know, they probably saw themselves in the uh, the Raymond's parents' role at that point. Did they learn a lesson? Or did they- <laughs> <laughs> about boundaries? Yeah. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, are we are we bothering Joe's sister? That's what your yeah. parents call her, Joe's sister. <laughs> <laughs> they just refer to them in reference to me. They refer to your their daughter as <laughs> Joe's sister. Yeah. That sounds about right. So yeah, in terms of like TV watching demographics, I feel like that's that is money. Those are the people who are watching network TV. People who are between the ages of, you know, 30 to 60. Yeah. Yeah. Those people do watch TV. The younger kids, people younger than that are watching cable. Well, if their parents bought them, bought it for them. <laughs> yeah. The problem when I was uh, 16, I wasn't watching cable unless it was at my friend's house. <laughs> Either watching cable or doing drugs. I feel like we had we had MTV for a, a year, <laughs> and that was and and you're right, Joe. That was the year I wasn't doing heroin. <laughs> Kept you clean. Yeah, I was doing good. Uh, should we figure out what our predictions are for this finale? Yeah. Which is a uh, just a spoiler alert. It's called the finale. Cool. <laughs> do you want to go first uh sure um so raymond uh in this first episode uh they kind of describe that he is a sports writer for a newspaper oh, yeah, yeah yep um so i think that's evolved by like this is 2005 at the end here mm-hmm. internet is just kind of starting to happen and i think he's a he's a sports writer for a like website so like he's it's got a blog online thing yeah he's he a sports <laughs> blog raymond.blogspot.com um robert um who we didn't really mention much in this episode he's kind of there he's jealous of um raymond's attention he's the one that actually says everybody loves raymond yeah he's also 40 a cop and lives with his parents yeah right so that's a bummer he pulled the cop he pulled the cop yeah, that's that's I I meant to say what I meant to say, because uh, he pulled a gun on uh, pulled, Raymond and Deborah. He pulled a cop. He pulled, he pulled a, a cop. He pulled a gun on them when they were in their own home. Um, so I <laughs> think that Robert now has kids. Oh wow! Okay. And I think that much of his attention is on them and no longer Raymond. That's, I don't even think Robert has a significant other. <laughs> I think he's got. They gotta evolve him past. Okay. Past that. Um, I think that Deborah sings. I think there's probably something in Patricia Houston's contract that says like, if I'm gonna, you know, I'm doing this final season nine, you gonna let me sing? I'm doing a musical number every episode. <laughs> Just ends with a yeah. Every episode ends with a, a full on musical number. Um, and then finally, I think that someone in the episode says everybody loves Raymond because why not? It happened in, in the there. first episode. It happened in the first. Put what it if? In the end. What if that was a thing that they went two hundred and ten episodes? Once an episode, every somebody says everybody loves Raymond. Mm. That'd I'd be insane. That'd be, be crazy. Uh, okay, so my first one is I think Deborah's pregnant again. Okay, interesting. I think in, instead of a wedding, it's like um, oh, well, with the, we're, these kids are like just old enough, you know. Yeah. That'd be fourteen and like eleven. Yeah, mm-hmm. pregnant. Wow, that's a that's quite the age gap, but it happens a lot on TV. Yeah, um, I think Frank once again sucks the youth out of the twins' heads. All right, <laughs> I hope so. Me too. Uh, <laughs> they still look two years old because he's been constantly sucking the yeah, youth out of them. And, but he looks fantastic. <laughs> it's a completely different actor. 
He's like, no, this is me. I promise you. <laughs> it's like, uh, uh, what's his Freddie Prince Jr. Now, <laughs> um, I think Ray, uh, instead of being a sports writer, I think now he's a sports caster. Ooh, okay. Yeah, he's like a uh, Bob Costas now. You know, Man, I'm just imagining Ray Romano like commentating a football game or something. <laughs> he's John Madden. <laughs> And then finally, I think Robert catches a murderer. Okay. I wrote catches a murder. Yeah. But I knew what I wrote. So catches I, a murderer. Catches a murderer. Um, and I didn't guess anything for Marie. She must be dead. For, for who? For, oh, for Marie. The, the, mom. the mom. Yeah. Oh, boy. I, I wrote I wrote five prediction, four predictions, and I wrote five, and I wrote Marie, and then I just crossed it out. That's so I, so if she's dead, I'm out. taking a point. Okay. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, those are my four ish ones. So, okay. The last episode of everybody loves Raymond was on May 16th, 2005, 32.94 million. Wow. Viewers. I don't know. Wow. That's insane. Yeah. That's crazy. That's insane. Um, just short, just shy of how many people listen to this podcast. <laughs> but, yeah. uh, as I said before, it's just called the finale So we're going to watch that and we'll be back. And we're back. We're done with the finale of Everybody Loves Raymond. I think every time I'm about to say the name of the show, I immediately forget what we just watched. (laughs) Um, It was called The Finale. And here is a write-up. It was written by Jesse Sanchez. Uh, Sounds like a good guy. Yeah. Sounds sounds rich. Uh (laughs) Ray undergoes a routine surgery. The medical personnel uh, have difficulty waking him up for a while, causing most of the family to panic. Ray finally wakes up, and everyone is a little nicer to him afterwards. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's one way to say it. Um, it was pretty like one threaded as far as sitcom TV shows go. Like, uh. You know, Raymond's going to have this surgery. The stuff goes down at the surgery. There's a scene with the parents that ties directly into the scene after that with Raymond and his wife. And then they all sort it out in the same room. And then they're they're having breakfast together. And that's the end of the show. Like there, there isn't <laughs> yeah. a B storyline. There isn't a lot of, a lot of times in finales, there's a lot of threads that they're tying together. It's really just this one story about Raymond having surgery. Yeah, and it was it's kind of funny because like the nurse came out and was like, "Hey, is he allergic to anything that we don't know about or he didn't say?" And they're like, "What? No." Mm-hmm. He's like, "He's just like not out of anesthesia yet, and it it normally he should be out by now. He's mm-hmm. having trouble waking up." Yeah. And then like Deborah starts like freaking out, and oh, everyone's there except for Marie, the mom. Yeah. Because she went to the bathroom, mm-hmm. and then literally 30 seconds goes by and then the doctor walks out and he goes oh he's fine yeah he woke up oh he's fine <laughs> yeah um and then everyone's like oh thank god and then they yeah they go home yeah i was trying to figure out in that like hospital scene like was that like is that poor communication from the nurse or is that just the family overreacting cuz it was like i feel like uh um, like if you're the nurse, you got to be very careful of the way that you, especially with someone undergoing surgery, you got to be very careful of the way you communicate Let like, Hey, everything's okay, but he's hasn't woken up yet. And we're trying to figure it out. <laughs> it just reminds me of that, uh, that doctor from, um, arrested development where he's like, uh, we lost him. Yeah. Yeah. That's and he's like freaking out. <laughs> and then he's like, no, we just don't, we don't know where he is. He's, like not, he's not there anymore. And they're like, <laughs> we thought he was dead. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That type of thing. It's just like, got to be really careful with how you phrase things because like families are, you know, bracing for the worst. Um, but yeah, so for whatever it's sitcom stuff for 30 seconds, they think he's dead. Yeah. Flipping out. Um, and that's the whole thing that they're, they're like, well, like Raymond can never find out about this and Marie can never find out about this cause this would stress them out too much. Um, but yeah, they can't help but like be kind of, you know, um, I they mean, thought he was dead. So now they're just like, oh yeah, my God, like we almost lost you in, in no part 
with the what she said, like the nurse said, did I go, oh, he's dead. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. But I went, oh, is he going to be in a coma or something? Like, you know, like yeah, what? what just, what's like, wrong? How serious is this? Yeah. That's the next question. Yeah. But they didn't ask any questions. Yeah, they just yeah. went to straight freaking out. Yeah, he's, he's, not, he's never waking up. It literally, she could have asked one clarifying question, and by the time the nurse, she would ask, and the nurse would have probably st- finished saying it. The doctor would have been yeah. like, "Oh, he's fine." The nurse probably would have been like, "Yeah, just letting you know. We'll give it another ten minutes and see what happens." <laughs> right. I mean, because if anything, the only, the only way I can see any reason for the nurse to even come out and tell them that is mm-hmm. one of those like, "This is a routine surgery. It takes about an hour and a half." And it was maybe like an hour 45 or something like right, that. Right, right. And then they're and like... You, and you don't want them to panic, right? We need to go out and tell you what's going on. Because I have heard stories of like people saying like, you know, it was supposed to be a three-hour surgery and then it was like four and a half hours later yeah, and like yeah. nobody has told us anything. Mm-hmm, and it's mm-hmm. like, yeah, now you're going to start freaking out. Mm-hmm. And so then she went out and they started freaking out. <laughs> so, yeah. So yeah, the family is you know extra sensitive to things after that, and um, I don't know. It's just kind of a weird way to describe that they're just all that everybody loves Raymond. <laughs> right? like, <laughs> yeah. They're all expressing yeah. their love for Raymond. I will say though, there were parts, and I I can't place like because they were just kind of funny. Like there was so many. I laughed out loud more this episode than I did in the first one. Mm-hmm. They just did funny things. Like I mean, one that was hilarious was definitely. Um, so Ray's like eating ice cream in mm-hmm. bed cause he just had like basically tonsil surgery. Mm-hmm. Um, and he, and Deborah's just staring at him the whole time yeah. and he's like, what's going on? But then the mom finds out and runs over and like, this is after like him and Deborah start like kissing. So they're uh-huh. supposed to have some sexy time. Mm-hmm. And then she just jumps into the bed with him and starts like kissing him. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, Oh my God. And I'm like, this is fun. This is funny. Yeah. Yeah. Different weird Weird stuff going on there, yeah. but but funny. You guys got to take those keys away from your parents. <laughs> it's too much. Uh, you know, and I mean, it was like even even Robert was sad mm-hmm. for a minute. He was freaking out. And then there was a part where the dad, before the mom came over, the dad was in bed with the mom. Frank mm-hmm. and Marie were in bed. And she was like, you know, she's like, I'm not in the mood. And he's mm-hmm. like, can I just put a hand on your shoulder? Because he was, I don't know, thinking about like their own mortality. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and like parts of what he said were really funny. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was just like there was some just laugh out loud things for me mm-hmm. in this episode. And I was like, this is funny. Um, and while while I'm on this, I because I, it you would agree with me. This didn't feel like any form of finale at all. No. Yeah. Right. It mm-hmm. was pretty much like. Oh, there was a death, like, I mean, a reach of a death, a death scare mm-hmm. for Ray, but it put his life in perspective, I guess, for everybody else. Um, and then, yeah, they did all that at night. Mom jumped in, kissed him, and then they were like, they figured it out. And then in the morning, they were all eating breakfast. Yeah. And like one or two jokes happened. And then it like literally just the camera panned out and faded away. Mm-hmm. And that was just the end of the episode. So I Googled. Did everyone else really get canceled? Because, <laughs> like, you know, why did uh-huh. it end like that? Um, and it says from uh, this is, I mean, take this with a grain of salt, but this is a Quora, you know, the, the like question site. Seen it. Uh, it said CBS did not qu- dis- make the decision to end the show in its ninth season. Quite the opposite. They wanted a season 10. Hmm. Um, but Ray Romano made it clearly uh, made a clear thought out choice to end the show as he was quoted saying, while it's still funny. Mm -hmm. I mean, making it nine years and having it be still funny is pretty impressive, Mm -hmm. I guess. Whatever. But essentially, he basically said, enough is enough. Yeah, we're done. I want to go out on top. We're doing good. Mm -hmm. And so that's why they ended it. Yeah. Also, you worked that nine years. That's a long show, yeah. Nine years of consecutive active work is pretty dang good for Mm -hmm. anybody. Mm -hmm. So respect there. Uh, if you just, I, 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 I'm curious on why they didn't end it <laughs> formally in a, in that way, but maybe it was just like they got done with season nine and he was like, uh, no more. And they just, he just didn't even want to plan for a finale or anything. Yeah. And maybe that's just his style is just like, you know, I'm going to get all out, all my jokes. I've got all my situations in and like, I don't need like a big finale. It's just like, 
this is just the last episode of, you know, I've said everything I want to say about marriage and family life and I'm out. Yeah, it kind of works out because it's not, I guess, you know, it's not like the first episode really felt like a premiere Mm -hmm. per chance. It, it didn't spend time like introducing people. It's just like yeah. in came the mom, in came the dad. Yeah. You can pretty much place them. That yeah, that episode could have been in the middle of season one, mm-hmm. middle of season two. Mm-hmm. The only thing that would have made it different is basically the age of the children. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's the only thing that changes. Mm-hmm. And that's, that was it. The kids were older mm-hmm. and they could talk now. Yeah. I do not remember those twins still. No. They they didn't really have anything to do much in this episode. No, but like at well, like all, you don't remember them existing. I just don't. Yeah. Re- yeah, I remember the little girl. Yeah, I I even thought that maybe there was two little girls. <laughs> oh really? Yeah, yeah but yeah, it's just the one. So, but I thought it was yeah, I thought it was funny. Good good regular episode. Two good basically we watched two regular episodes yeah, of episodes. every Devil yeah. of Raymond. Mm-hmm. and that's and that's that. Yeah. I, I mean, then maybe that was just the the goal. It was just like, yeah, I mean, we're not, um, there isn't a big overarching thing we're doing here. It's just, just got some things I want to say about families. We're making jokes about it. And this one, there's a few like death jokes <laughs> because it's the finale. And, uh, you know, that's it. We're out. This, this TV family is going to continue on living their life. Like that's kind of what that last scene of them having breakfast says to me is just like, yeah, for them, this is just another day and they're just going to go on. Right. Yeah. Um, Oh, funny. By the way, it's a Wikipedia says connection to the King of Queens, Hmm. who which we just talked about earlier. Um, Kevin James was an actor and a writer on everybody loves Raymond. And once James got his own show, the two shows crossed over Hmm. first crossover happened on the king of queens um it was funny his name isn't his his name is ray barone in this show not mm. obviously not ray romano mm-hmm. well what was the thing uh uh tyler no what was it i'm trying to think of uh the the andy griffith show taylor taylor it's not it's yeah. not ray taylor <laughs> it's not tim the tool man taylor mm-hmm. he didn't he didn't do the taylor <laughs> the old taylor uh swerve um, and Ray Ron also turned up in the episode of the, oh so basically Ray Romano was on two episodes of King of Queens it looks like Ray Romano or like Raymond Barone well Ray Romano as Ray Barone gotcha okay <laughs> was on it but also Kevin James showed up on Everybody Loves Raymond as Doug Hefferman and is that his character in King of Queens good question the titular King of Queens is the King of Queens' is guy's name, Doug. Yeah, it's Doug. Cool. Doug and Carrie Hefferman. Leah Remini is Carrie. Cool. So I guess next Crossing week we're watching King of Queens. No. I guess it's part of the, the Raymond verse. Jimmy, if you pick King of Queens next week, <laughs> I don't know if it's I don't know if it's his show. <laughs> you get negative one points. If he doesn't pick King of Queens, if he does. Oh, if he does pick King of Queens, okay. So, let's try to let's try to through the the week. Try to feed it into Jimmy's <laughs> mind that we should like just like say something about Scientology and Lee Remini. Yeah, and, like, about how much Kevin James is really funny. Yeah, man, have you ever seen Mall Cop? Is that <laughs> Kevin James? Yeah, Paul Blart. Paul Blart. Yeah, Paul Blart. You know, uh, I'll talk about. You know, what my favorite card suit is Queen Queen <laughs> Heart, Queen of Hearts, something like that. Let's see if we can make him lose a point. <laughs> It'll just be fun. Just walk him a little, a little uh, first and last inception, <laughs> if you will. Make him think like he uh, he picked it. Uh, I am I am now curious based on seeing these two seemingly normal episodes of Everybody Loves Raymond. Mm-hmm. I'd like to do like a a Joe and Claire thing where I like see what like some of the best rated episodes of this show are, mm-hmm. and just pick those out and watch some of those. Yeah. Watch just some a, holiday episodes. Yeah. Like, <laughs> so let's watch a, what's the, what, it's a uh, August right now. Mm-hmm. So is it like thanks, Thanksgiving? Halloween. Halloween. So the Halloween yeah. episode. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm excited about Spooky Month, by the way. I yeah. Could, I could watch uh, a spooky show. Man, I, 
like a month ago i thought of a good spooky show like now, now i can't remember it <laughs> it's gone well you got like two months to remember it right <laughs> yeah september october got time you got about a month and a half mm-hmm. ish to figure that out so um that was yeah it was just a tangent i'm just excited about spooky month i almost picked a spooky show today but I was like, it's not spooky month. We need like a springtime or maybe even like a midsummer spooky month to just like get us through the year. Would like May be a good spooky month? Yeah. Like it's not quite like fun time, summertime yet. Yeah. And you just, it's a little spooky and weird. It's probably rainy because it's mm-hmm. spring, right? Mm-hmm. May showers? Yeah. Yeah. See? That's the spookiest month in spring because <laughs> it rains all the time. Mm-hmm. Got it. Um, should we Should we do predictions? Yeah. Did I bring my prediction notebook in here? Probably Might not, not have. <laughs> uh, in the meantime, I can go. Yeah. Um, I have that Raymond writes for a sports website, uh, which they didn't really talk much that about. That was pretty. Job. I feel like we did terrible based on this the very one we, <laughs> one-sided episode. Yeah, the things that we decided to predict. Yeah. So, uh, so no points for that. Um, I have that Robert now has kids. He does have a wife. He did. Yeah. But no. Um, I feel like they didn't have kids. Yeah. Cause like, right? They were staying at like Raymond's place that night. I Thursday still night, feel like, like they live with his parents. I see. Yeah, he still might, but no kids. Um, they would. The kids would have been in that last breakfast scene for sure. Oh yeah, yeah, and they weren't. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I had Deborah sings. She did not. No, she cried. She cried. She cried some. Which is not singing. <laughs> um. And then I have that someone says everybody loves Raymond, which like I think there is plenty of opportunity to, but they did not. Yeah, they really shied away from that. Mm-hmm. They didn't want to do it. Yeah. Huh. Well, that's too bad. Well, you so, got you got a big old donut hole. Yeah. Huh? No points. Zero. Uh. Well, I think I'm following along in your footsteps, <laughs> and I didn't bring my notebook in here, <laughs> so I'm gonna remember mine. Mm-hmm. Mine were Deborah's pregnant. Mm, yeah, she, she is not mad. pregnant. Mm. Robert solves a murder or catches a murderer. Catches a murder, yeah. Either way, no. he didn't do either. Yeah, he wasn't even in uniform. No. Ray is now a sports caster, all the Bob Costas mm. or John Madden. <laughs> yeah. That didn't happen either. Yeah, again, don't know about his job. And then I had one about oh the dad Frank sucks the youth from the, uh, the twins, twins' heads, and there was no youth sucking either. Yeah, he looked older. <laughs> he looked, <laughs> he looked like that. Like when old people get kind of like frail, mm-hmm. you know, like they skinny up mm-hmm. when they're old. Like I was like, mm, you're not looking too good. The children sucked it back out of him. <laughs> <laughs> so the children were like, we want to grow up faster. We're, we're going <laughs> to yeah. suck your age out of you. <laughs> and they sucked it back up. Uh, Yeah, so that didn't happen either. So I got a zero as well. Mm-hmm. But hey, we had a good time, right? I mean, now that I think of it, it would have been tough to make any predictions for that last episode because we didn't really see much of like their normal lives outside of the, the main plot. Yeah, and what I mean, and that's why this this was not a finale by any means. More of a middle of a season episode, whatever. Mm-hmm. It could have been a premiere, even like it could have been a season premiere mm-hmm. of the stem just getting worried, like a little who, and then they might have been able to make like dead jokes throughout the season or something <laughs> like that. I don't know. Uh, yeah, but odd for a finale, especially like that. I want to. I want to know what were you thinking, Ray Romano? Why are you putting us through this? I don't know. Maybe he just felt it was too much pressure to try to do some sort of big finale. And he's just like, I do my thing and I'm out. Yeah, it's too much. Pr- ah, it's too much pressure. Ah. <laughs> Debra. Debra. Ah, kids. Marie. <laughs> he's his mom, probably. <laughs> he calls her Marie. <laughs> <laughs> Robert, you're a cop. <laughs> Catch a murderer. <laughs> All right. I have uh, obviously my uh, Ray Romano, you know. Inter- inter- interpretation <laughs> uh it's on point i get it listeners calm down i'm here number one yeah it it wasn't really ray he's not yeah really uh, no yeah we yeah we can't afford ray romano <laughs> not yet at least uh but okay cool well i guess that's it that's the uh that's the episode jimmy if you're listening don't you dare pick king of queens next week <laughs> uh for everybody else uh tweet at fndl and ask for queen of queens <laughs> yeah next week 
That'd be funny. And you can do that at FNL Podcast on the Twitter or on the Gmail. That'd be fantastic. Uh, that's kind of all we got. So we will see you next week for another episode. Uh, have a have a have a everybody loves you kind of week. <laughs> Goodbye. Live every week like everybody loves you.